Today, I'll be showing you guys how to create these procedural backgrounds where you can go around and have a fully dynamic area, as well as be able to cut out large rooms like this with guaranteed entrances wherever you wish. Let me show you how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure our plugins are turned on for procedural content generations. Just go to plugins and search procedural and turn on procedural content generation framework, BCG, make sure it's on and restart if needed. Once you've gone ahead and restarted, you're going to need some assets. I've actually modeled a simple wall piece and a wall piece with a gap in here and a basic floor that is also uh, has a cutout. So we have a, just a pure flat one and one with a small cutout for the light because we're going to want to light this place. And you can see here, there's the four assets and just very basic material. So we can actually play around with this. Now, when creating these assets, I strongly recommend making them align with the grid. The assets that I'm using, I created with exactly 400 units wide. That's where we're going to be working with in terms of creating the rest. When they're exactly a certain length, like a multiple of 100, it is very easy in Unreal to just have things then incremented by exactly 400 units. It's a nice round number, so I highly recommend it. But to get started, we're gonna need a few things. I'm gonna right click and get ourselves a blueprint class of an actor, and this is going to be our BP backrooms. This is the blueprint that we're using to lay out the actual um, entire level effectively. And we're also gonna need a PCG graph, and this is gonna be our PCG backrooms. Nice and simple. So let's open up the BP backrooms. And for this, we're going to need a few things, starting with a simple spline. I want to make sure it's spline and not spline mesh. And then we're going to generate the actual like, layout for this. So I'm going to click on this point and delete it. So that way we have a single point. And I'm going to right click on it and go to spline generation panel. And we're going to generate a big square. And let's make it something like 10,000 units by 10,000 units. Nice large area to begin with. And we can go into the detail panel and I'm going to search for closed to get closed loop. We want to make sure it's a closed loop on, but of course that creates this loop here because this point is not actually linear. So I'm going to right click on this, go to spline point type linear, and that fixes that. The other thing is if I click here and I move this over, you can see I actually have an extra point here. And this is something I realized recently. So to fix that with this point kind of dragged out of the way, just press delete on your keyboard. And now you only have a single point. So if I, let's say, click on here and click back, right? It's only selecting one point here which is exactly what you want. If you have overlapping points, it's not the end of the world. You can, of course, move them around, but PCG will occasionally complain when you have them overlapping. Now, speaking of PCG, let's go ahead and add our PCG graph. So I add a PCG component, and here we want to just select the graph we've created. So there's our PCG backrooms, and now I can go ahead and compile and save this. With that done, I can go ahead and drag out this big rectangle. You can see it right here. And in fact, we're not actually even going to need the floor. So I'm going to just go ahead and delete this entire floor. Now, to make this more interesting, I'll go ahead and just select these points, and I'm going to give it a more interesting shape. So I'm going to hold Alt and just change the shape of this so that we have different areas. Well, so let's do something like this. This way, it's just not a big rectangle and it's a little more interesting when you run around. But with that all set up, let's go ahead and open our PCG graph and get started. So in here, we're going to get our spline data. And this is actually the spline that we just created. And we need to sample it. So I'm going to get a spline sampler. Now for the spline sampler, I'm going to change it to be instead of on spline, we got to do on interior. And we need to check unbounded. This is necessary in 5.3. In 5.2, you don't need to do this. And we need to change our spacing. Now, our spacing, again, is 400 because our walls are 400 wide. I'll go ahead and set the interior sampling to be 400. And I'm going to send the interior border spacing to be 350. So that way we have a little bit of a gap in between them. So if I go ahead and sample this by hitting the D key, you can see we now have a perfect grid of cubes. And here are all our points, just as we would want them. Now, immediately we can get the floor in. Floor is going to be very easy. All it is, is at this point, a static mesh spawner. And in here, we just need to add our floor. So I'll go ahead and add an array, open the static mesh and just populate the floor. We don't need to sample anything. We now just have a perfect floor in. So now let's get the actual interior walls and exterior walls. We'll start with the exterior walls. For the exterior walls, we're going to grab our, from our spline sampler and we're going to get ourselves four transform nodes. And I'm going to duplicate this three times and plug it into each one. So the, for the first node, I'm going to need to set the offset minimum to be 200 on the X. On the second one, it's going to be negative 200 on the X. And then for the third one, it's 200 on the Y and negative 200 on the Y. So it's positive, negative, 
X and then Y. We also need to set the rotations on these. In my case, my model is actually aligned to the Y axis. If yours is aligned to the X axis, you will need to offset these values by 90 degrees. The first one is going to have zero rotation on the Z. The second rotation is going to be 180 degrees. The third rotation is going to be positive 90. And the fourth rotation is going to be negative 90. From here, we're going to need a few different stones. So I'll grab ourselves one, and I'm just going to duplicate it three more times. So we have one for each one. And then go ahead and plug these transform points directly into each source, just straight through, like so. And now we're going to cut each other out. So the first one is going to be the difference for the second one. The second one's going to be the difference for the first one. And the same with the bottom. Third is the difference for the fourth, and the fourth is the difference for the third. And then from here, we just want to merge all these points together. So I'll just grab ourselves a merge node, and then I'll plug in all of these outputs into this two point node. So now if I go ahead and sample this, you can see we now have a point all around the edge, which is exactly what we want. And we have a little bit of an extra thing here, but that's just because we need to adjust just a little bit out. There you go. Now it's not a perfectly straight line. But now we can go ahead and spawn the walls. So let's grab ourselves a static mesh spawner, get ourselves a new mesh entry and plug in our wall. There is our wall straight plugged in. And now you can see we have a nice border all around the entire level. So I'll go ahead and just select all of this. I'm going to comment it to be exterior walls to keep ourselves organized. I'm just going to move them a little bit down and floors. is just going to be by themselves. Nice, simple floor node here. OK, now let's do the interior walls. So for that, I'm going to want to get a copy of all the points. So I'm going to grab ourselves a transform points again, and I'm going to get myself a second one. And just like before, I'm just going to plug this into both of these nodes. And effectively, what we want to do is have it on a grid. So like it's in both directions. So that way we have the walls in each direction. And so we're going to do one of the transform points is going to be at zero rotation. And one of them is going to be at 90 degree rotation along the Z. And then we'll merge it together. So it's one set of points. And then we're going to grab ourselves a transform points. Now, in my case, I've created all the pieces to be with a pivot point at the center and not at the edge. So we need to offset them. So that way the pivot point is effectively in the edge. So in my case, they're along the Y. So I'm going to do negative 200. Again, if yours are aligned along the X axis, you might want to do the X axis. It all depends on your specific mesh. But now we want to grab ourselves a select points node, and this will just go ahead and filter out some of the stuff in here. So I'm going to just remove half of the points randomly. So that way, some of them will have corners and some of them won't. After that, let's grab ourselves a static mesh spawner and then go ahead and spawn on our walls. So for this, I'm going to need two entries. We're going to want to do a regular type wall or the straight wall, and we're also going to want to plug in the wall with the hole. So once I have both of them plugged in, I'm also going to change the weighting of these. So by default, right now, you have an equal chance of getting the straight wall and the one with a gap. So I'm going to make it so the regular wall, the one without a gap, is five times more likely to appear than the other one. And now if we look here, we now have this entire place set up where you can now go into all the different areas. Now, this works, but I have a better solution to this that gets a nicer result. Now, what you can do is first, instead of just two of these, have them be in all four axes like so, and then have them all merged in. And instead of 0, 90, you would have 0, 90, 180, and 270. So it's in all directions. And then prune to, let's say, keep only 25% of them. And gets you a little bit of a nicer result, but honestly, it's still not great. I've created a node in the past to incrementally rotate. So you can specify a rotation angle and it'll only rotate along that angle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill these. We're only going to use two points and I'm right after this transform points, I'm going to just place in my incremental transform node. And what this node is, it allows me to specify I want Z rotation only and I want it to rotate within 90 degree increments. It will randomly rotate that point between zero and 360 degrees in only 90 degrees. So it'll be 90, 180, 270. And then I'm going to set this back to being 0.5 ratio. So now you can see we now have a more, much more interesting design for these guys. And now we have corner pieces, use pieces. We have empty areas. Some things are more long walls. We have walls that are just around. So this just gets a nicer result. This is not required, but it does allow you to do it. Now, if you're interested in creating this for yourself, the card should be in the corner up top for you to go ahead and create it for yourself. I highly recommend it. It is a very useful node to have on all PCG projects. But now that we have this, I now want to be able to specify a certain area to be a room. 
I want to just cut out, maybe remove walls in a certain area, and then I want to make sure I have doors in specific areas, potentially. Now, if you guys are enjoying this tutorial so far, I would love it if you hit the like button. And while you're down there, consider subscribing to see more awesome tutorials like this. Let's get back to it. So let's start with cutting out the actual room walls. We're going to need two different kinds of cutouts. We're going to need ones that cut out for the interior walls and one that cut out for the exterior walls. So what we're going to do is actually create a new blueprint and it's going to be a blueprint actor. And this is going to be our EP interior walls remover. I'll go ahead and open it up. And all we need to do is add ourselves a cube in here. Just a simple cube. We don't need anything special on this. And I also need to go in the detail panel and search for tag. Now we don't want a component tag. We want to make sure it's on self up top and we want to add a regular tag here. So it's not a component tag. It's a regular tag. So I'm going to just call this interior wall remover. I'm going to go ahead and compile this. And I'm also going to select this cube and I'm going to give it a different material. I'm just going to give this basic asset three. I'm going to make it green so that way I can quickly identify what this cube is. So now I can go ahead and take this and just drag it out and scale it to my heart's content. But of course, it's not going to do anything as of yet. So in our actual graph, this is going to be for interior rooms. So right after the select points, I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. I'm going to grab ourselves a difference node and get the output right into our static mesh spawner as before. I want to cut out that cube. So I'm going to get actor data and I'm going to change self to all world actors and by tag. So this is where you want to place in that tag. So to make it easier on myself, I'm going to go into my blueprint and I'm going to copy paste this right into our tag so that it's spelled exactly the same. And I'm also going to turn on select multiple. So that way we can have as many of these rooms and cutouts as we want in level and they'll all work together. And from that, I can just plug that right to the differences node. So now immediately you could see that it is cutting out the area. Now, one other thing we might want to do is actually have this hidden when we're playing, of course. In our blueprint, I'm going to select the cube and I'm going to search for hidden in game, have that turned on. And I'm also going to turn off collisions, which is very important. Instead of block all dynamic, I'm going to say no collision because once it's actually in the level, we don't want to accidentally collide with the cube. But now how do we make that area have walls around it? And that's with just having it cut out the exterior walls. So instead of duplicating this blueprint, I'm going to just make a child of it. I'm going to right here on this interior walls remover, I'm going to create child blueprint class. And this is going to be instead of interior walls is going to be exterior walls. This exterior walls remover. I can go ahead and open it up. And in this one, it already has all the settings we've created before, but I'm going to click on the cube. I'm going to change the material. The exterior one is going to be orange. And I'm also going to click on self search for tag. And instead of interior wall remover, I'm going to search exterior wall remover. So for the exterior walls, I'm going to take this difference node and the interior wall remover and I'm going to put it right here, right before it actually does all of its splits. I'm going to duplicate it here, scooch the floor piece down and it's going to go right in here because we want to remove the points before we do any of the movement and any of the extra stuff. And the only thing we need to do is come here and just copy the exterior wall remover and paste it as the new tag that we're going to be using. Now, it might go with an error saying no matching actors are found in the level, but that's fine. We just haven't placed it yet. So now in here, I can take this exterior wall remover, place it in, and you can see as soon as I place it in, it is now creating walls around that area. So you can see it has created this these walls around it. But in cases where we create rooms, we want to actually remove both the interior and the exterior. I'm going to go ahead and create another child class of the interior walls. I'm going to just call this both walls remover. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And just like before, I'm going to change the color of this asset. Let's make it silver. And then for the tags, we actually don't need to create a new tag for this, although we can. We could reuse both of the tags. So and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to create a new tag and I'm going to copy the exterior wall remover tag into this tag. So it has both the interior walls and the exterior walls. So now if I remove both of these and I drag in the both walls remover and I scale it up, you can see it is now removing all the walls there and it is removing any extras. So you can see we now have a big hole in here. And if I just adjust this slightly so we can grab that piece, we now have a big open area. And no matter how much it generates here, it will always have this area here. We now have a problem. We can't get into this room. So we need to now set up a way of having one of these walls or however many walls we want specifically be the wall with the gap. And so just like before, I'm going to right click on this guy, create child blueprint class. And instead of interior walls, I'm going to call this doorway creator. I'll go ahead and open it up, change the color of the cube again to something else. 
This time I'm going to set this to be just this blue material. And on the self here, I'm going to search for tag and we're going to create a new tag. So for this one is going to be doorway. It's a nice, simple name. And now in our graph, we can go ahead and implement that in. And we're going to implement this in for the exterior walls and the interior walls. Exterior walls, because technically the walls around this cube here are considered exterior walls and interior walls, because we might want to specify that always just have a doorway in this location for the interior walls as well. So let's do it for the interior walls first. And for that, I'm going to just detach this part here and I'm going to scooch it over and we're going to grab ourselves a new difference node. And we can plug the output of that into here. And from our first di difference node, where it has removed the wall pieces, I'm going to grab ourselves an intersection node. And what this node is, is basically it returns true when you have things overlapping each other. And they can be a little bit overlapping or very overlapping, but this effectively gets us the result we want. So we're going to get another get actor data node. And in this tag, we're going to set the doorway. Copy doorway, come here, paste it in. This is our doorway, and this is going to be our intersection source. Now on the intersection, we want to change the density function from multiply to minimum, and then we can plug this out into the differences. So this is effectively going to just remove those points, but we will now want to replace them with something else. So I'm going to take this static mesh spawner, I'm going to duplicate it down here, and instead of having both of these indexes, I'm just going to keep this one with a gap. So I'm going to take the first one and I'm going to delete it. So now it's only the gap. So now we can take this doorway creator and just drag it into the level, and you can see immediately it has created this doorway here. Now, if I move it out of the way, it is a solid wall, put it back here. It is always, no matter how it regenerates, this spot will always have a doorway. Now, it is possible that there's just nothing here. If there's never a point there to begin with, well, then it will just not generate anything. But assuming that it creates a wall, it will always have a gap there. But now we do the same thing for the exterior walls. So now that the interior walls are pretty much done, I'm going to select all of this and call these interior walls. And now for the exterior walls, it's the same thing. So to make my life easier, I'm going to just select all of this with the difference node and I'm going to duplicate it down here. Scooch my static mesh spawner over. And now this merge node is going to go to the difference and the out is going to go into the static mesh spawner. And from this merge node, it is going to go into primary source. So now if I take this cube and I just place it right here, you can see we now have a doorway in here and I can place as many of these as I want. So there's another doorway there. I can make another copy and there's another doorway there. So now, in this room, we have three entrances on one side and nothing on the other side. So no matter what, you can have very specific scenarios where you have entrances where you want them and only where you want them on these big rooms. And of course, I can make another room. I can just come here, make another room, change the shape of this. Now I have a nice long one. Take this blue cube and just pop it right there. And now this room now has something as well. So this is effectively has become a big generator for a backroom style environment. All that's left to do is add the roofs and the lighting. Now, as always, the project files for this are available on my Patreon, where you can join these wonderful people here in supporting what I do. It does really mean a lot to me. So thank you so much. And if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord is down below. We can come by, say hi, and chat and hang out. And if you have any questions, we can always help you out there as well. Let's get back to it. Now, the basic roof is very simple. We already have the actual points for it. So all we need to do is do a transform points and we want to just raise this however high our walls are. So in my case, there are 300 units tall. So I'm going to put 300 in the Z and then I can do a static mesh spawner and plug in our floors into our mesh entries. Because in my case, I'm using the floor as the ceiling. So immediately you can see it has now created the roof. And if I come in here and go unlit, you can see we now have both the floor and the ceiling. But of course we want to have lighting here. Right now it is, well, way too dark. So what we're going to do is grab ourselves a second spline sampler and plug that from the original. And this one, we're going to specify how often do we want a light in here? I would like every other square to be a light. So on this spline sampler, instead of interior spacing being 400, I'm going to set it to be double that at 800. I'm going to reduce the interior border sample spacing to something like 200. So that way the points that it's creating are smaller and further apart. And this is because we're going to use them to cut away these pieces. So in here, I'm going to grab ourselves a difference node and the source is the top one. The difference is the bottom one where we have the 800 spacing. Plug that into our transform points. And this difference node, we want to change from minimum to binary. 
You can come here and you can see we now have this perfect grid of every other one is now removed. So we can start putting in our lights in here. Well, to do that, I'm going to take our transform points on Static Mesh Spawner, place them, place them right there. And in these points, we're going to spawn in the version with the hole. So this is going to be our roof light. It's a little dark, but you can see we now have this piece perfectly in there. But of course, we now also need a light. So for the light, from this transform points, I'm going to get ourselves a spawn actor. And this allows us to spawn any kind of actor, like a blueprint actor, instead of just a static mesh. And if I search for the word light in the temple actor class, I can get myself a rectangular light, which is kind of what we want. Now we want to change the collapse actors to either merge PCG only or no merging. In our case, this is not PCG at all, so it's not going to merge anyway. But we want to change that because if you keep it on merge everything, it is not quite going to work. But the problem with this, as you can see, it has created this light, but it's not quite in the location we want and not with the settings we want. So instead of using the default rectangular light, we're going to create a new blueprint and it's just going to be an actor class and it's just going to be BP light. I'm going to open it up and here I'm going to add ourselves the rectangular light. But now we can actually control the settings of it. And the other thing I want to do is remove this icon. So I'm going to add ourselves a scene component and then I'm going to just drag it on top of the default scene root and click make new root. So that way the icon is just gone. And now on the rectangular light, what we're going to do is slightly move it down by something like negative 0.7, just very slightly down. So that way it doesn't overlap in my case. And then we need to angle it down. So I'm just going to rotate this by 90 degrees where we have on the Y axis to be negative 90 and the 360 here doesn't matter. You can make it zero, but we've now rotated it down. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the values here. I'm going to make it a Candela's. I'm going to change the intensity to a value of 400. The attenuation radius, we're going to keep the same. Source width and height, I'm going to change to 150. And this will all depend on the mesh that you're using and the shape and the placement of it. But now with this in, I go ahead and compile and save this. In our graph, in our PCG graph, we can now, instead of specifying a rectangular light, I can just specify BP light. I'll go ahead and select it. And now you can see it is actually lit up in here. The one thing I might notice is it is actually not lighting this properly in here. And the reason for this is because we are facing the light down. So it's very bright here, but none of the light is actually going up. So what we can do instead is actually have it point up. So if I change this from negative 90 to positive 90, you can see it is actually lighting the square and then it is bouncing the light around it. So instead of lighting directly down, we're now using kind of this bounce light effect, which is getting us this, this indirect lighting effect. Now you can have this, of course, be lit above. The actual geo can be lit and then it can face down. This is entirely depending on your setup. But the other thing you might notice is it is just very much blown out. So what I recommend going is under lit, turn off game settings and make sure that your EV 100 compensation is zero. You can also do this permanently with a post process effect. So if I go to turn on game settings back, I can add a post process volume onto my level and then search for unbounded. And you want to turn this unbounded on and then search for exposure. Change the metering mode instead of auto expose to manual, exposure compensation to zero, and then turn off apply physical camera. And now you got the same effect as I had before by just going in here and turning it off. But this one is just in the viewport and this one is for everything. But now we have this kind of spooky effect. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this rectangular light, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to rotate this one around so it's facing down, but I'm going to decrease the strength quite considerably. Maybe there's something like eight, the default, because you can see if I turn to zero, we have the nice dark everywhere, but with just eight, it, it gives that little bit of a compensation around. And now we have the lights above and around, and we can just run around here and go into every single area that we wanted to explore this place to our heart's content. And we'll still have the large rooms that we've placed in the specific areas that we placed them. So for example, here is one of our large rooms. That we can have now anything we want in here. And since it's all being cut out, we don't need to worry about something getting in here or something of that nature. But let's say you're now happy with this layout. You're you're done with this. You don't want it to keep regenerating here. Well, all you need to do is just select it. And this is the back rooms graph. You can see it now has everything here. And then click the PCG on the bottom here and then click clear PCG link. Once you do that, this separates it from the graph. So now if I click on it, it now selects the PCG stamp and I can just take this and move it somewhere else. And all of our settings, their entire layout and everything, including the large room and everything, 
is, as you see, still here. All our lights, our blueprint lights are now below. They're just parented underneath. And all of our static meshes are still actually instanced around. So now I can reselect this original back rooms. I can change the shape of it if I want, and it'll just regenerate for the new one. So maybe for this one, I'm going to want like a bigger room on the inside. I can just go ahead and make it wider. And now if I fly in here in game mode. You can see we now have a large area in here. So just like this, you can use it to create any kind of backroom style environment very quickly and procedurally and just put whatever you want in from there. But now that you've got all this set up and you're thinking of ways of incorporating this into your setup, check out this video here where I show you how to, you could use PCG possibly for real-time applications.